Well, as you may know, the Zotero 7 has hit the ground running. The new Zotero is out and about. It's their first major redesign in 18 years, apparently. And it certainly is looking much better than what it did in the past. It was a bit old and a bit tired. So let's have a look at what Zotero is now offering. So there's a new item pane, which is on the right hand side. And it's got vertical sections as opposed to the horizontal tabs that used to be across the top of the pane. So as you can see here, we've got like the attachments, the notes, libraries and collections, tags, etc. They're all coming down and you just expand or collapse those as you may need them. The side navigation now will provide a number of top icons, which will give you access to various parts of the tarot. That's one thing. And then also at the top here, the header in the pane is also customizable. Next thing is that dark mode has finally arrived for Zotero. Now, previously there was a plugin that used to do this that I used, but it wasn't as good as the native dark mode that we now have available. In addition to the dark mode, Zotero is now supporting EPUB format. Uh, they can be better than PDF because of the, the way in which the text will flow across pages. On the other hand, there are disadvantages as well because you can't access them in a PDF reader. So you have to use an EPUB reader. So dark mode apparently is the native mode, but either way, you can change it back to the light mode should you choose to do so. Now there's two views. It comes with the comfortable view, which is the one up the top of the screen here. And then there's the compact view, which is the traditional view that Zotero had. So it's, it's just making it a little bit more dense or a bit more open, depending on what suits you. But the new default, is, is certainly more appealing, as they say. I find it a lot easier to read and scan when you're reading screens for uh, a long period of time. They say that uh, Zotero 7 has drastically improved performance across the board, yet to see uh, and assess. Uh, but the other thing is, too, there is now 64-bit support for Windows, as well as the Silicon Max. So upgrading your Windows, if you're using it, is worthwhile. Uh, but if you have problems with anything, the database structure has not changed apparently. So you can always roll back to Zotero 6 if you choose to do so. And the only thing that I can think of at this stage where you might want to do that is potentially plugins. So the plugins that are in Zotero 6 are no longer supported, I found out when I upgraded to Zotero 7. There are a lot of upgrades which are already available. The two that I found were not available that I use are Site and ARIA. AI, ARIA is an AI plugin for Zotero. I have made a video on it before, but that doesn't work and I can't see any indications that it may be updated. However, let's hope it will be. Now the Obsidian plugin that integrates Zotero and Obsidian has been updated. It was updated on the 6th of August, I think from memory. So it is working. I've tested the importation of articles and annotated notes and PDFs from Zotero to Obsidian and the template that I use. A lot of my subscribers also use is still working uh, and working well. So we'll have a, a look in more detail about it. Now, there is a new Sci-Hub plugin. Previously, there was one listed on the Zotero add-ons or the plugins page at one stage. I can't see it there anymore, but there is another one there. Because I can't put the plugin links here, I'm going to link to all the plugins that I use, including things like Better Bib Text and that, in the video notes and in the article that will accompany this video. So the blog post promoting Zotero 7 says that the reader has improved considerably and now supports EPUB, which I mentioned earlier, and so that you will be able to read it within Zotero just like a PDF. It will also display web page snapshots automatically in the new reader as well. So that may well be a bonus for you. When it comes to annotations, you can also annotate the EPUBs and the web pages as easily as the PDFs. Now, you probably need to remember that the annotations within Zotero are contained within the database. So if you've done a PDF and you've written extensive notes about different things, and then you pull it up in your system PDF, reader those notes won't be visible 
So that's why I use my system PDF reader rather than the Zotero one for doing it. Zotero has some new annotation types. Uh, it says you can now do ink annotations on the desktop with a touch screen or a, a stylus. You can do underlines and uh, add text directly to the page, which is available though for PDFs only. There is smarter citing so that when you're importing citations into Microsoft Word, uh, Google Docs and Obsidian, you'd be aware that a little box pops up and asks you to select uh, the citation and you normally just type in the first couple of letters and it'll pre-select several that you can choose from. That is improved apparently. It does provide a number of options straight away and automatically suggests the tabs that you may have open in Zotero already. Now that's an improvement to the citation sharing within Zotero as well. When it comes to collection search, at the top here on the top right hand side here of the uh, left hand pane, you'll see that there's a search magnifier and that's where you can actually search for collections so that if you've got a multitude of collections within your Zotero database, you can actually type the number in there or just reduce them down to only the ones that are, are, that are relevant and display those in the left hand column. So these are sort of power user type steps and you may or may not use them. It'll depend on your particular usage for Zotero. Vertical tabs menu and attachments. Now in the right hand pane where the pane area is in this image here you can see if you click on this down arrow it will call a drop down give you a drop down of the tabs that are open across the top and it will also give you the uh, drop down of the attachments that are within those tabs that can be useful if you're working out of the right hand pane you can just move down you can move them around by the way and you can also select different tabs from within there you may choose to reorder them there which will reorder them across the top of your screen as well the attachment previews now within the pane that you'll recall that i mentioned that they are now drop down menus and collapse you can see here in this image we've got one attachment on this particular article I've dropped it down and you can actually see bits and pieces of it obviously it's just to give you a bit of an idea because it'd be difficult to read within the pane itself next we have improved organization so here we have the trash management deleted collections are now moved to the trash the same as what the items are and there is a libraries and collections list now this is a new section on the right hand side in the pane and when you've highlighted the article here in your left hand or the middle tab, I suppose, the middle area, selected an article. It will show you in here, providing it's obviously ex expanded to, to open, what collections this particular article is included in. So it's in my library. It's in two folders within my DBA fold collection as well. So you may have an article that you've used extensively in a number of assignments or something of that nature. And you can see there that it might be in six or seven different folders. So the customizable file name re renaming as well. You can rename files if you wish to do so, according to a wider array of options, which will be available within the settings menus. So to get Zotero 7, you can go within Zotero 6 to the help and check for updates and then that will automatically download Zotero 7 for you. If you have Zotero already, you can go to zotero.org and download the software from there. Remember, it is free. And if you wish to use Obsidian with it, which I would certainly encourage to fill your note making, that's at obsidian.md. And that is also a free platform with a heap of free plugins that you can use. There's, as I mentioned earlier, there is platform support for all varieties. And that's it for the upgrade to Zotero 7. I hope you enjoyed. I have a lot of work to do in upgrading the Organized Scholar course. I have to update some of my videos around Zotero as well. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and keep up to date and subscribe to my newsletter on my website. If I can help you with anything, reach out.
send me a comment on the video, shoot me an email, do something, but say good day. Anyway, that's it for today. Cheers.